you guys, it's Kerry Meyer View for the long-awaited review of the second half of the season of The Flash, Season 4. Now, I know, you're like, Kevin, why are you reviewing this now? Season 5 is already two episodes in, what's going on with you, why this has been so delayed? Honestly, guys, as you know, uh, I stopped reviewing TV shows uh, individually, episodically, and especially these shows. And this is mainly one of the reasons why I did it. It was very hard to keep up with these shows. There's too many of them. Uh, it's very easy to fall behind, and that's exactly what ended up happening. I didn't want to fall behind on this show by any means, or Supergirl, or Arrow, or Riverdale. I'm going to end up reviewing all of them. Um, but, you know, I figured now I do actually have the time to binge them, so I binged the rest of Season 4 of The Flash, and as you guys know, I was really enjoying this season at first. I thought this was definitely a return to form for the show. It was a lot more lighthearted. They had a villain who wasn't a speedster, and that was definitely something I was interested in getting into, and I thought the setup was really good. However, in terms of this second half of the season, or at least the... Uh, episodes I haven't reviewed, I wasn't as big as a fan of. Now, let me be clear, I did not at all hate the second half of the season. In fact, this is much better than where we were in season three, that is for sure. This is a lot more watchable, it's a lot more interesting. The problem I have with this season is mainly its length and some choices here and there, but we're just getting to right now. Now, in terms of acting, I don't really think I need to get into it all that much. Uh, everyone here is pretty good for the most part. There are definitely quite a few problems with the second half of the season. It doesn't really reside in the acting, though. Everyone here is really good. You know, Grant Gustin, Daniel Panabaker, Carlos Valdez, Neil Sandiland still continues to be very good as the thinker. Tom Cavanaugh knocked it out of the park this season, I thought, as he always does. But especially in the second half of the season, I really thought he went all out. I do want to give a uh, shout-out to Kim Engelbrecht, though. I I thought she was really great here. I really liked her as the uh, character of Marlies. Sure, we got to see her throughout the season, but I thought especially in the second half, uh, she really did stand out a lot, and I think she did a very good job here. For the most part, everyone, like I said, was pretty good. I will say, however, the bus metas um, on the show, as the bus metas went on, were terrible. I was not a fan of them. I thought, honestly, as they went on, they got worse and worse. Not only are these guys so not intimidating and so not um, scary at all, but some of them are downright insufferable, especially that country singer towards the end. Whoa. Wow. That, that, that's all I'm going to say, but wow was that bad. I mean, I didn't dislike her at first. Once she turned into a bus meta, though, and she started to embody uh, DeVoe's sort of traits, then I was immediately turned off. She was so bad. She hammed it up so much. There was no intimidation whatsoever. I did not buy her as his villain for once. Many times it just felt like she was, like, hamming it up, and it did not work at all. And uh, that's definitely one problem with season. Other than that, I do think the acting here is quite good. And again, that really is not my biggest problem with this half of the season. So, the way I'm going to format the rest of this review, because there are a lot of episodes to talk about here, I'm not going to talk about every single thing that happened, obviously, so I'm going to talk about what I liked and what I dislike. So, starting off with what I liked about this uh, second half of the season is, once again, I liked the fact that we kept things relatively simple. Uh, I liked that they didn't try to overcomplicate things all that much. You know, we had this really good storyline going on with DeVoe, how he needed these bus metas, and he was going to use them to you know, preserve his body or whatever because he wants to be eternal and things like that. I thought that was definitely a good plot line. Um, that be and I did like you know the simplicity and there was a lot of good stuff they did do with that. I think the fact that the show didn't try to overcomplicate things definitely on the right track there. I like that they uh, you know, like I said they kept things relatively simple. And the character arcs as well, I thought were definitely a little bit better this season, especially when it comes to Caitlyn. I actually really liked what they did with her and Killer Frost. I like how we had this whole conflict where, sure, she's kind of accepting Killer Frost more. We get more into the backstory of Caitlyn and Killer Frost, and I thought that was definitely uh, really well done. I liked what they did there. That being said, though, the fact that this season is so simple is also my biggest flaw with this season, because 
while there definitely were a lot of things I liked about this, um, you know, a, a second half of the season, for everything I liked, it still brought me back to my main issue with the season is that it is way too long. And I have heard many people bring this up for a while now that, oh, Arrow and The Flash and Supergirl, they just go on way too long and they need to be trimmed down. And I've always maintained the, um, I, I've always maintained the attitude that, oh, you know, eventually they're going to give us that payoff that we want and they're going to show why this villain stuck around for a full season. And most times they do. But this is one of the rare cases where, yeah, I can absolutely see that because DeVoe absolutely outstayed his welcome here. After around, I want to say, episode 16, that's really when he starts to become very tiresome. And it's because the show starts to get very repetitive in that sense. And this is exacerbated by the fact of what they do with the character of Ralph, who, as you guys know, I liked at first a lot. I thought he brought a really fun energy to the show. Sure, he was wacky, but he brought this absurdness and quirky side to the show that I, I really liked. And I like getting into him sort of, you know, becoming less of a dick and learning to become more compassionate and kinder to people. The problem is with this second half of the season, they repeat the same storyline with him in fi in like five episodes and I'm not joking I mean there were so many times a season where I watched it and I was like didn't we just see that like didn't that just happen like I I wish I was joking but it's the same storyline where oh it seems like Ralph is gonna be on our side now but no there's something about him that is keeping him away from the team and we need to try to get him to uh you know we we need to try to get him to dial that down a bit we need to try to get him to you know harness that and uh you know try to uh focus more on his heroic abilities and eventually Barry's going to understand him and eventually it's going to become an advantage of his and it just became so repetitive and and predictable to the point where I didn't want to see much more of the Ralph character and it sucks because it's not Hartley Sawyer's fault he's doing good stuff with the character I like what they gave him as um, a character this season but again the problem with it is that I felt they could have done um, a lot more with the Ralph character than they were he was very much given just very few storylines and again it's they repeated the same thing with him for like five episodes and I and it sucks because I think there's a lot of good storylines they could have done with the Ralph character. I wanted to see more stuff for him, but again, it was the same storyline for five episodes. And granted, yes, it was a different quirk, but it pretty much followed the same formula. You know, Ralph has some sort of quirk, and it's a detriment to the team, and they need to figure out how to solve it. And eventually, him and Barry have a really nice talk, and they realize that, you know, they can work very well together. Same thing, rinse and repeat for five episodes and it just got really annoying after a while I needed less of you know I needed more development for Ralph and less of them kind of scaling back it always felt like that's what they were doing they were going back on what they did in the previous episode acting like it didn't happen and it just did not work for me overall but aside from Ralph, that's still not the biggest problem here, because let's talk about DeVoe as a villain. At first, I really liked DeVoe. I thought his plan was actually really interesting, and I like getting into him and Marlies's relationship. But between the bus metas and the, again, many repetitive things that he ends up doing as a villain... I found DeVoe to be pretty boring and pretty one note, to be honest with you. His plan, I do like. I like the idea where, and these are spoilers. If you haven't seen the rest of the season, I, I advise you to go away because I am going to spoil it right now. And I'm going to assume that many of you, you know, if you've wanted to see the season, you've seen the season already. So I'm just going to get into it. I do like the idea that DeVoe is trying to get into everyone's minds and trying to, you know, basically uh, do this thing called the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment he keeps talking about through the season. We find out eventually what it is, where this essentially is going to make him the smartest person alive. And the way he's going to do that is to dumb down everyone. And basically, you know, he, he's going to forbade them of any knowledge whatsoever. All of that is going to be gone. Um, you know, he's going to make sure he takes away any memories. And this is especially well done with the effect it has on uh, Harry as a character. 
character. I really liked where Harry went this season, where he had to learn how to become a better person without the one thing that, you know, really drove him as a character, and that's his intellect. And he had to learn how to move on without it. And I think that's a really good story, especially considering where Harry was in Season 2, where you take him in Season 4, Harry for sure feels like the most fleshed out character of any of the Wells we've had. And sure, Eobard Thawne, you could say for sure, but I'm talking about any of the incarnations we've had besides Eobard, he definitely is the most well fleshed out, I think, of any of them. And I really loved where they went with Harry here. Now, sure, it is played for laughs, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but... I did like the effect that this has on him, where he realizes that, you know, DeVoe is very much outsmarting him, and that he no longer is as smart as he thinks he is, and he has to become a little bit more emotional and caring to people, and I really enjoyed where they ended up going with that, and especially the dynamic between Harry and Sisko, the way that does change, and the way it evolves this season, I thought that was also very effective, and I love where they end up taking that. But then you have something like, I said, uh, his plan, which, while his plan is good, it's very flawed, mainly because of who his opposition is, and that's Barry, who, as we know, Barry's the fastest man alive, and he should be, you know, in, in any given situation, this should have been something that Barry would have been very easily able to defeat, especially once the Enlightenment actually takes place, which, let me tell you, is an effective scene. I like the way the Enlightenment scene was done, but Barry could have easily ran in there and stopped him, and look, I understand all that would take all the suspense away, but... Maybe you should have rethought the villain, because the villain's plan overall, there really is no reason for him to be so, you know, up. He, he should be outnumbering Barry. There's no reason why he should be doing that, because he's not a speedster. He isn't someone that can outrun Barry and things like that. So, because I'm glad that they are moving away from the speedsters, but the issue we now have is that we have someone who is not nearly as powerful as Barry. Sure, in his mind he is, but he's not actively stopping Barry from running. It would be one thing if he did. It would be one thing if said, like, he, if, if you, you know, say, like, he froze him or something like that, or he threw him into another, you know, I uh, fly, or he threw him into another dimension so he wasn't able to do that but that's not what ended up happening Barry is very easily able to stop him but he doesn't just for plot reasons and again it just makes DeVoe feel a lot lesser to the show. And it sucks, because again, I do think Neil Sandilands did a good job in this role. I do like his initial plan, but the payoff and the way it does end up happening just did not really work for me in the way I think they wanted it to here. So like I said, DeVoe's plan didn't really work as well as I think it could have. I do think that there was some good interplay between the two. I like the scenes where the two were working together, but I never really got the sense as to why DeVoe was as big of a threat as he was, when again, you have someone like The Flash who could outrun him in a second, and I don't know why they didn't just take that initiative. Why didn't they just have Barry go in there? And again, I, I understand that they wanted to make sure that they could leave us on a really good cliffhanger for the finale, but come on, you, you knew this wasn't going to last long. You knew this wasn't really going to have that big of an effect on the show. But him aside, how are all the other characters this season? Uh, to be honest, like I said, I do think that they did a good job with some of the character arcs here, but let's talk about Marlies, who I thought Kim Engelbrecht, like I said, was one of the more consistent actors of the season for sure. She was always delivering for me. And then came that flashback episode, and while I did understand the purpose of that flashback episode with fleshing her out more, I honestly don't think we saw enough of it. I think they could have maybe sprinkled flashbacks of these two throughout the entire season, to be honest with you. There's a lot of stuff they could have done with these two, and it would have made it that much more effective. It would have made it feel a lot less, um, you know, a, a lot more integral than it really did, and a lot more um, just game-changing for the show, because... Because like I said, we do have a very good arc here where, you know, she met him, he was in her college class, and he was a professor there, and the two start connecting, and he eventually tries to get her into the idea that technology is destroying the world, and that basically that is the main cause of um, humanity's destruction, and he wants to do what he can to try to eradicate all technology. And you can see that throughout most of the episode, uh, Marlies is very much against this. She is very vocal in how wrong she is about this, and you can see, okay, the relationship isn't going to work here. 
But then one situation ends up happening with her involving technology and suddenly she's on board. So you understand where that doesn't really work? Like it, ju it just felt a little bit rushed. Like I understand eventually he is going to uh, get her on and, and you can still do that story. We're like, okay, maybe she's against it at first, but eventually she does come around to it. But it just felt like a little too quick of a bait and switch there. It wasn't the most annoying thing about the season for sure. Cause like I said, there were definitely some things that annoyed me more but it's something that I think they could have done a lot more with. In that moment where she ends up leaving him at the end of the episode, I think it would have felt a lot more impactful and a lot more effective if, again, they would have maybe uh, stretched these flashbacks out throughout the entire season. And I think it would have been a lot stronger had they have done that. So yeah, like I said, good character, but I do think her storyline was definitely very rushed, and especially the way things ended up in the finale, uh, the way things wrapped up, I understand where they were trying to go with her, but her character, sure she did end up helping Team Flash, and that's for sure, but you just didn't really give her, I think, a very good um, conclusive arc, and I think they could have done a much better job with that. Uh, the rest of the characters, like I said, I do think had some pretty good arcs here. I like what they, like I already talked about, I like what they did with Harry and Caitlin. Uh, Cisco, not really. Uh, you know, you had the whole thing with Gypsy, but that was once again one of those things where it was like, oh, every so often we'll cut back to Gypsy and Cisco, and it, it's definitely a better arc for Cisco than season three, which he virtually had nothing to do at all. Um, so he definitely did have stuff to do this season. I'm not going to pretend he didn't, but I still think they could have done a lot more with him. Um, in terms of Cecile and Joe, I really love this dynamic. I love that through Cecile being pregnant, she uh, has certain abilities as well where she's able to read minds. And I thought that was a really clever and fun idea. And I really love where they went with the Cecile character. Character this season. I'm interested in seeing more of that relationship in season five, and I think that definitely is a really great place to take it for sure. Um, and then, of course, there is, uh, you know, the whole storyline with Iris, which there is that weird episode where Iris somehow ends up gaining Barry's speed, and while it's a fun episode, it again just stems back to the idea that the season is way too long, and episodes like that and that really great one-off episode in which Barry, Jay Garrick, and, um, you know, Jesse, they all team up together to take on this big threat. While they are definitely good episodes, they just felt like one-offs, and they didn't really feel like they needed to be here. And I think that, again, that's one of those things that's only there, really, to stretch out the entire season. And I really do think this season would have worked better if it was maybe 13 episodes. But the other big thing with this season is the tone. The tone, I'm not going to lie, it's very tonally inconsistent. It, it tries to be a lot more lighthearted and fun. And definitely, that's good. I like that the show did go back to its roots and have the comedy and things like that. Because that's how we always divorced the Flash from Arrow. We said, okay, sure, the Flash does have a lot of stuff with Arrow, but it is considerably... Uh, funnier, and it takes itself a little less seriously, and this season did do that. The problem is, when we tried to get into the more serious stuff, it felt a little bit forced. It didn't feel as natural as I think it really could have, and I think they just relied a little too heavily on the comedy this season, particularly with the arc of Harry. I thought at first that was going to be played completely for last, but thankfully, in the back half of the season, he actually does have some really nice moments, and I do think they did a better job as the season was went on, um, but there were definitely some points where I think they relied a little too heavily on the comedy, especially when it comes to the Ralph character. And then, of course, we do have to address the elephant in the room, uh, the cliffhanger of this season. I actually really like it. I do think, yeah, it was pretty obvious this was Barry and Iris' daughter, but there was a nice through line there where every so often, you know, we'd go to her and we'd see that she kept appearing in the characters' lives. However, most of her appearances ended up being relatively forgettable. And a lot of the things that they were talking about, I'm like, oh yeah, she did that. Oh yeah, she was in this episode. Oh yeah, she she did that thing. The only one I really remembered her is when she was at Barry and Iris' wedding. And I don't know if it was because of how jarring it was and because that was really when we started theorizing, but her other appearances just was not um there just weren't very memorable to me um but i definitely did like the ending where we revealed that she is in fact nora west allen and uh that she is barry and iris's daughter and i'm interested in seeing where that's going to go it's a different dynamic it changes up a lot of the things that we've seen in the show and i think it definitely is the right direction to go in for sure i'm very excited to see where they end up going with that 
Overall, I thought the season was okay. Uh, there were definitely a lot of things that I did enjoy about. Like I said, I thought the character dynamics were a lot better here. Uh, I thought that they did a better job of keeping things simple and not overcomplicating things. There weren't any like big twists this season or anything like that. The ending does uh, promise for them to go in a new exciting direction. I'm definitely interested in seeing where they're going to go there. We had some really great characters this season, but ultimately, like I said, the season is one, it's very forgettable. I I think out of all the scenes of The Flash, this is the one where I'm really not going to remember it at all. Devoted did not end up serving that big of a purpose. Again, as as um, promising of a villain as he was, he just didn't really live up to it. His plan, I think, was just a little too flawed, and it just was not enough for 23 episodes. I don't think this was a villain that we needed for an entire season. I think this season could have easily been 13 episodes, and you still could have gotten the same stuff out of it. A lot of characters end up being kind of pointless. Wally showed up at the end, and I forgot he was even on this show because they did absolutely nothing with him. I was just hoping he'd stay on Legends full-time, but no, apparently he is coming back to The Flash. Um, they did a better job with Caitlyn, you know, they did a better job with uh, Harry this season. I really like the storyline they ended up going with him. Uh, I liked, you know, Marlise this season, but overall, the bad, unfortunately, does outweigh the good. There was a significant period of time where I really did feel like they were dragging things out. Like, guys, did anyone remember the Barry being in jail arc? Like, that was very obviously done just to stretch out the season. I knew it definitely was going to. I definitely not expected to last as short as it did. But it's the CW. What should I really expect at this point? When a character is going to be in jail, they're not going to stay there for, you know, most of the season. They're going to be out of there in like two or three episodes. And with Barry, that was no exception. So again, it's more of a frustrating season than I would say it is a... Uh, terrible season, because again, there were a lot of things I enjoyed. There were a lot of enjoyable moments in this season. There were moments that did make me laugh, but for everything I liked, there was another repetitive storyline with Ralph, or there was another really um, ridiculous bus meta that I found to be really annoying and uh, degrading. There was, you know, some pointless episode that didn't really need to be there. You know, there was Iris getting speed, which, again, was a good exercise in breaking the formula, but it just didn't really work in terms of the season as a whole. So at the end of the day, guys, uh, there were definitely things I enjoyed about the season, but I am going to give the second half of the season of The Flash Season 4 overall a C, and the season overall I would give a C+. Plus. And with that, I am done with the Flash Season 4. I can now move on to Season 5, which I am definitely very excited to go to. I can't wait to see what they end up doing with Barry and Iris' daughter and things like that. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, I apologize for this review being so late. Uh, I am going to be reviewing Black Lightning, Riverdale, Arrow, you know, all of those very soon. So definitely look forward to reviews for all of those shows. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.